Hi. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Zusammen. Hi, Tzili. Hi, Tzili. And we are here every week. And we are inspired every week again and again and again. And every time we're excited like it's the first time. And today we have... Tell, him, tell them who. Tell them who. <laughs> uh, she, she told me we are going to talk with Yossi Ben-Dodi. So I went to Google to know something about him. So I, I couldn't find Yossi Ben-Dodi. Yossi Ben-Dodi is Yossi, my cousin. Yeah. And Zippy thought it's the last name. <laughs> I thought Ben-Dodi, which is my, co- my cousin, I thought it's the last. That shows anyway. you that I am a really very up to, to all my bones uh, with discipline. You tell me something, I go ahead and check it out. So, Yossi Guy. You, Yossi, Yossi Guy. Guy. Oh, that's much expert better. Expert on dogs. Oh. Uh, judge dog breeder. Ah. And he will tell us what it means and why do we need it and uh, why it's good and uh, all, all, all his adventures. Okay. Hi, Yossi. Hi, Yossi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you, too. You just nice... got back from France, I think. Yes. I just... ah. right. What did you do there? Because you sent me a funny, fun picture with a well, great car. Uh, uh, what's going on? Last week, I judged a show in France, a dog show, um, which is something that I love to do. And I was invited to judge um, sight hounds, which are dogs that run, you know, and, and catch uh, all sorts of things like uh, um, hares and um, <clears throat> gazelles. And it started from the, the time that last year, I was invited to judge Salukis, which are the local um, sight hounds and, and uh, help the people. What, in... is I, what is this word? Sky what? Saluki. Saluki. Is there is a I know nothing the about dogs. And, and it is a, the native uh, breed in this whole Mediterranean area. Now, uh, when I was, I was invited after the uh, peace accords with the Emirates, I was invited to judge there last year, in last January, in 2021, um, which made it a very special occasion for me and for the dog world in general, because I'm the first Israeli to have judged dogs in an Arab country. And it's a way for me anyway it symbolizes the peace between the countries. Yeah, it's something that, that it's our hobby. It's something that it's part of our life. And here I had the chance to do something for me very special. Can we suppose it's a myth right. that Arab people don't have dogs? Uh, most Arab people don't keep dogs as pets. Okay. They, they, traditionally anyway. They will keep the, the Bedouins, for instance, they keep the dogs outside, the dogs that like Canaan dogs and the, that type of dogs, which are called pariah dogs, uh, but they don't breed them. They hardly feed them. And the dogs are there just to warn that something is going to happen. They will bark and then you, the, the people will see. However, with these Salukis, like the Arab horses, they keep them in their tents, inside the tent. And they're uh, valuable, they're valued. People uh, breed them in, in uh, a way that they want to preserve the breed and to make it even better. And what the whole thing is, it comes from the fact that they used to live in the desert. And in the desert, they didn't, they, they were nomads. They didn't stay in one place and, and have agriculture. So they had, and they had to eat somehow. So the most of the, their food came from hunting. That's why they needed the, the Arabian horses that were fast. And the dogs that were also fast were able to run in the desert and to catch the, 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 what they were hunting, the prey. But yes, I, did, you, did you have any what a kind of an experience you had with the Arab participants uh, in, the, in this uh, competition when they found out that you're an Israeli judge? Well, I was very, very surprised and happy that the people there were very warm towards me. First of all, 
our hosts, they, they were really into this. They, they wanted to show the proximity to Israel and that Israel is part of the Middle East. What we were, we were uh, taking part in is called a festival of heritage uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, which they hold every year. And they, they celebrate dogs, the Salukis, and they don't let me say dogs. They, I have to say Salukis there. Uh, the um, falcons, um, uh, the horses, the Arab horses, and camels. Well, the people that arrived there with the dogs were from many different Arab countries, from Morocco, um, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Iran, Jordan, and of course locals, which was really interesting for me and I was very happy, but I had no problem with anyone there. They were, they were all happy to see me and it, it was sort of, again, as I said, the fact that we all love our dogs, it makes us all a family. And Let's it see, happens- what do, you, what do you judge in this competition? Okay, well, if you take two dogs, okay? One is a poodle and the other one is a, a Labrador. You can tell the difference between them because mm -hmm. they have a different size, they have a different head, they have a different body and everything is, is, can be described. And we have a standard for each breed, an international standard by which we breed them. And the, the standards are supposed to, to help us uh, make the dogs work properly, do the work that they were supposed to do. Which uh, like, for instance, uh, poodles, why do they have all the coat? Because they used to work in puddles, poodle from the puddle in, in Germany, in German. And they, they used to, to, to work in, in water. And the, the coat keeps their chest uh, warm and they uh, keeps them from, from getting uh, uh, problems, okay? Um, like if you take um, all sorts of dogs, I mean, they like, okay, dachshunds, ducker, okay? You know what I'm talking about? No. Nope. The little sauce. He knows everything, but not me. <laughs> not so <much. laughs> they, 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 are, they were meant to uh, catch uh, all sorts of animals, small animals, in tunnels. So they are long, they're built like that, it's and they, they can, and, they can it's, and, they can, and since the uh, rear part is narrower than the front, then they can come out easily. And actually, there are three sizes, which we, uh, which we um, measure according to their chest, the, the width, the, the diameter of the chest. Most dogs, which we measure the height, but here, according to the chest. It's okay, not so a beauty contest. It, it, it can be a beauty contest, but the idea is not beauty. It's more, is the dog as close to the standard as possible? And does it have any false mistakes? Like in some dogs, uh, if the tail is up, that's not good. It, it should be down. Why? Because the dog is built. In, so there's in, in that. nothing to do with the owner. The owner has no input. It's how the dog, it's only to keep him uh, clean and maybe comb him nicely and that's it. What the owner can do. No, that, it's no. Because there's a way to show the dog, to present it, to make it look as good as possible. We, we judge the dogs standing and we, we go over the dogs and then we ask them to run. And they have to know how to stand the dog properly and how to run properly. Why is and it, it makes it important, a Yossi? Why yeah. is it important? How they run or how they stand properly? Why is it important? Well, if they stand properly, I will see that they are built correctly. And if they don't stand properly, they will, they're ruining what, what I can see. And of course, since we have just a certain amount of time, we cannot waste all the day just waiting for them to stand properly. They, they may lose just because of that. So and how, they do may you, have a how do they get prepared for a competition like this? What do they need to go through? Um, well, first of all, the dogs have to, to have a pedigree. 
first of all. And then you can you enter the dogs. We started with the early age. What? Pedicure, my mama. What? What did you say? <laughs> Pedicure. What? Uh, what is it's, it? It's the parents, the grandparents, where they come. Oh, the heritage. They have to be. Yeah, like who is my life. grandmother? Yeah, they okay. It's like me. Yes. Okay. Family tree. Family tree. Oh, so okay. who have to be aristocrat? It's not aristocrat. It's pure, more. Well, pure aristocrat. is, I call it aristocrat. So, but you know. So not cannot, cannot be, yeah, okay. We want to know where they come from because it does mean something. And and uh, so that's one, th the first thing. It's and they- the dog. You see, I'm much better, I think, I believe, than my grand grandmother. Uh, only because exactly. I grew up in exactly. different, yeah, but that doesn't matter who is my great grand No, 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 but it doesn't matter because you inherit things, not always things that are external, but also health. And we, we try very hard to, but to keep up. But is it true healthy. that when you have uh, a pure uh, breed dogs, not for all of them, it's really healthy for them? Um, that is a problem. It's not exactly that way. The thing is that when we have pure bred dogs, we can, uh, see and identify the problems that they may have. We, ha we do DNA tests, we do genetic tests. If you take a crossbreed, you, do, you can't do these things and people don't do these things. They can be sicker than anything else, but, but you don't know it because they don't follow it. And we try when we breed to breed the healthiest dogs possible. The two, for me, the two first most important things are health, and behavior. And if a dog doesn't behave well, and it's, it doesn't like people and it barks all day, who wants it? We want the dog to be our friend, to enjoy it. And temperament is number one for me. Do you think the dog is enjoying it? Um, if it doesn't enjoy it, then I, sh I wouldn't take it there. But many dogs enjoy being with their owner, being seeing other dogs as well. And I don't think it's cruel, believe me. The only problem the is that, of cruelty. What the what the per, you know most animals, uh, they keep let's say contributing to nature, um, you know all the time. Those dogs, what the benefit to us to the society to? Wow! Now you open the big big big. No, uh, because okay. they are they are there for entertainment. You know okay. what I feel, Yossi, that the many 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 years ago dogs were wild animals part of groups and somewhere on the road they did like an arrangement with humankind i'll be yours and you'll take care of me that's how i feel all the time because i see even when i take chewy my dog downstairs and i see few um, natural movements that he does you know that you know he was part of something very ancient. I don't want to offend you, but so he exists to please you. Well, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it's movements, all about it. movements, like when he pees or poops, or, you know, that there are many things that he does that I know he was part of an ancient thing in the wild. And it's still in the breed and it's still in the nature of dogs. So I, is that, is there anything that it, it's true about it, or it, I'm just inventing a feel? No, definitely, definitely dogs come from, from wolves, as they say. I mean, yep. that's the theory that goes nowadays. And they do have something remaining from them, but they have a lot of differences as well. And what I, what I want to do uh, to, to answer is about the, 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 the job that they do, what, the, what they do for us. Nowadays, oh, okay, let's, let's go back to history. In history, the dogs did a couple of things for, for human beings. Yes. One, they, they used to guard. They, they, they would bark when somebody came. They could uh, attack, let's say, if there was a wild animal or some, something else. And they helped find food, which is extremely important. And that is, again, what the Salukas are still doing, okay? If you go back for a moment there. Now, nowadays, people are still hunting with dogs. 
some of them even in order to eat. Dogs definitely are working as guard dogs. They guard houses. Also those who come to those competitions? Yes, yes, some of them. They still, uh, or most of them, don't really function in what they used to function. No, no. The, the thing is that we what we have now is several other things that dogs are doing that they didn't do, we didn't use them before. Um, we're using dogs as assistance dogs right. for, for disabled people, okay? Yeah. We're using dogs in, in police and army. But they're not coming to your competitions. Some of them do, oh, yes. Really? Yes. Not, I mean, we don't have uh, military dogs that come to, to, to dog shows, okay? But they do have special competitions for working. Yeah. Not, don't judge what the dog looks like, but the job that it's doing, okay. the work that it's doing. And how uh, we have, we have th th that type. Of, we have dogs that are doing what we call agility, which is a competition with all sorts of, um, um, things that they have to pass through, jump over, uh, and, and very interesting. It's also, it works on what the dogs can do. I have this little girl, she's about three and a half months now. She jumps about half a, half a meter. You're speaking I'm about a dog, a girl dog. My little dog, yes. Okay, uh, oh, uh, uh, and she she's something I I put her out of the room because she likes to bark, uh, but um, uh, yeah. And anyway, we and now I'm working nowadays with a dog trainer who has some unbelievable things. First of all, he has dogs that can sniff cancer, and he, and what we we have a, a kennel. In, in Israel, in the south, uh, um, we, in which they're training now several dogs to, to sniff cancer. And the, the, the interesting thing here is that they don't need to touch the person. You don't need blood. They, all you have to do is send them a sample of your breath, hmm. and which of course wow. can keep you can send it from the United States to Israel, no problem. Yeah. It doesn't need cooling or anything else. Amazing. Dogs have very high uh, rate of, of, of um, uh, precision. They, they, something like 90 How something. How can you train him to be able to distinguish between the breath of cancer or the breath of a beautiful woman like me? We work, we, when, we, when we train them, we, work, we, we get samples from people that we know ha have cancer and from people that we know that don't have cancer. So we teach the dogs, if you smell this, you have to say, this is it. And what they do, they, they just sit down, that's all. The dogs, they, they have several samples in front of them and they will sit down. Wow. So one, th one thing that we're working on. Another thing is dogs that can, foresee and foretell if people have uh, bad intentions, oh. which is unbelievable. That's, that's okay? makes sense. That makes sense because if I meet a dog and I'm afraid, you will immediately sense it. True, but I'm talking not about what when dogs that read, that read body language, okay? That's definitely true. I mean, when, when I... Uh, go want to go out. If I reach for my wallet, the dogs stay home. If I if I reach for their leashes, they will run over and and and, and start barking because they know that we're going. But I'm talking about a, a, what we call sort of a sixth sense. Yes, yes, yes. I meant. And let me tell you something. Uh, we're being um, accompanied by several uh, uh, scientists. It's not just something out of this head. Uh, by the way, the, the, the person that I'm talking about, the trainer, his name is Uri Beckman, and he's been working for many time, many years and I'm working with him. So I, he, he pays my salary. So I just want that to, to be on the board, okay? <laughs> um, what, what he told me 
Well, he was working with with one with two of his dogs in a hospital for the mentally uh, ill. He patrolled the place, waiting for the dogs to give some sort of a uh, warning that they they if they uh, latched onto something. Um, and one day he walked down a long hallway with doors on both sides. He walked and this dog started to pull him towards the end of the, of the hallway where there was a blank wall. Okay, but the dog signaled. So he told the, the staff there that uh, the dog had signaled. They checked the rooms on both sides and there was no problem. The following day he arrived and they told him that on the other side of the wall, there was another building and somebody had tried to commit suicide there. So the dog, the dog was able to tell he didn't see the person, he didn't smell the person, he felt it, he sensed it. They, he, he works, Uri works with dogs for people who have diabetes and th that sort of thing that where, where they get uh, seizures and the dogs can tell that the, the, a seizure is going to happen, oh. even from a huge distance. He had a dog in Israel. The owner was in New York, and the dog signaled that, that it, there was a problem, and there was. So this is something completely unbelievable, and that's something that we're developing. People who are working with dogs are developing this, and what he intends to do with the uh, um, th this thing is to try and develop uh, for the for the cancer machines that can do the work that the dogs are doing. So he, go, he wants to to co continue with that even further. Uh, so believe me, nowadays another thing that people are doing are uh, therapy dogs, very popular in Israel. I can tell you, very popular. Very people popular are, everywhere. Are, yeah. People, well, I'm not sure if, if everywhere, but probably in most modern countries. In the West I'm not sure that, that in Africa or, or uh, whatever they, they have that, but yes, and we have a lot of that. So dogs are doing a lot. And, you know, I have, I have a lecture on dogs and religion. And religion, I, religious people, Jewish people, religious don't have they dogs. Don't have dogs. You, you know, there's always a, a, a something, someone that's different, and there are Jewish, religious, Orthodox people oh, really? who do dogs and pets. So only the ultra Orthodox don't have it. The... Where it's written that they are not supposed to have dogs. It's not exactly true. It's not exactly true. It's it's it's. I mean, the depends on who who the rabbi is. There, you know, oh, uh, for a friend of mine, she. Uh, some some people came to wanted the puppy from her and she had uh, Yorkshire Terriers which are small dogs and they, they came these black people in the black suits and everything and she says I'm not giving you a dog you're going to keep it uh, tied outside and I don't want a, 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 this small dog to, to be outside like that they said no 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 our rabbi says that if the dog uh, is not on the same level as people we can keep it in the house, okay? Oh, it's not supposed to, to sleep in the beds or there. But but listen, all the all the the idea of um, uh, animal protection and and SPC, the SPC, SPCA, it comes from the Bible. Uh, and the Bible says that you have to take care of your animals before you, you eat yourself, That's and fine. that you have to rest and so on, and there's another thing. There's a very interesting connection between animals, between dogs, and um, the the afterworld. Okay, the afterlife. Yeah. Like in the Bible again, uh, where Exodus, when the do when when the people of Israel were fleeing from Egypt, the dogs did not bark. And because, and why was that so important? Because they believed that the dogs could identify death when it's coming. Does that remind me maybe of what I was just saying about Uri's dogs? 
Yeah. Isn't it interesting that this so it closes the, the circle and so, and so if I will have a list of 90% 100% of what we attach to humans, you know, different qualities or different traits. Uh, is it different between societies, how many traits they attach to a human traits they attach to a dog, like in the Arabs. They, how they see dogs in compare, you know, in comparison or uh, to humans? Well, definitely, you you can see difference in different societies, a difference in the way that they they uh, um, uh, their approach to to dogs is, because of course there's the history. Like if you take uh, Western Europe, people are, have been having keeping pets. All the, for for generations, and when 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 we came to Israel, when the, when the Jewish people came to Israel, started to, to to come back, the people who brought dogs were Germans, German Jews, yes, which was part of their culture. Uh, so they, they in in a, a town called Naharia, there was a lot of of uh, Germans, and they had a lot of dogs there. Right. And in, in, gradually, more people uh, also uh, learned about it. Now, in the past 20 years, since we've had the, the people from Russia coming, they also have a lot of culture of keeping dogs and pets. And uh, so, they so we love competitions. Yes, they do. They, they do. Love they they like used to win. They used to go to, to dog shows yeah. in buses, in special buses, I remember I saw one of those, in special buses they would, which, in which they had beds for the people and place for the dog with, with a toilet and a kitchen, and they would drive for days yeah. just to get a dog show somewhere. Nowadays, many of them fly, but, but crazy, yeah. You see them everywhere. Yes. And, uh, Do the Chinese participate competition as well? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The, the Chinese have... What happened in the uh, Chinese culture that they, they switched from eating dogs to have pet dogs? Look, I the... the eat dog, not Chinese. Chinese, Chinese also? Dogs, dogs, uh, dogs as food uh, have never been very popular. They have, it, ha it is part of a culture in some places, in some parts, yes. But if you take the hundreds of millions of Chinese, most of them don't eat dogs. They don't. And, and many of the, the more uh, well-to-do people, the ones who have more money, they started buying very, very uh, um, uh, beautiful special dogs from Europe. The, the German Shepherds, for instance, they have a special show every year in Germany, and it's the top show there for this breed. The winners for many years were bought by Chinese for something like 300,000 euros uh, or, or dollars or whatever. Yeah, crazy, crazy. So Ch some Chinese people, and especially the ones who have money, they're, they're, they're breeding dogs like uh, very high quality. We have a different question for you. <laughs> I have a friend who opened a dog channel in uh, San Diego. Did you hear about it? Channel just for dogs, TV channel. Nice. And, and how is he doing? Well, uh, we will know in two hours. We are going to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Yossi, what's the craziest story that you have from this world? That, uh, oh, God. That what, just one? <laughs> The, the most crazy one. Actually, I, I doesn't come to mind at the moment um, because I, I'll tell you something. For me, all dog people are crazy, okay? All, completely, including myself, yeah? The only difference How is- How many dogs do you have now? At the moment, I have four. I have one 13-year-old, one eight-year-old, his daughter, who's five, and her little daughter, which I mentioned earlier, who is three and a half months old. Yeah. So what, and what breed are um, what, what kind? They're called Sheltie, Shetland Sheepdog. 
and they're like collies but smaller. We have to put some pictures, you know, of those dogs that you mentioned. Send them to those boys. Well, I actually, I will tell you something. One of the things that I do, I take photos and I write for magazines about dogs, ah. including a very famous American magazine called Dog News. I work with with the uh, magazines in Brazil, in India, and in in Europe. So yeah, I, I can, if you want photos, no problem. You can get as many as possible. But I'll tell you, the, the crazy thing is that we keep going to these things, to these shows. The, I'll tell you something. Last week, I was invited to France. Uh, by the way, when, when, when you judge, the people who invite you, they pay, pay all your expenses, OK? You don't get paid. It's not, it's not, you don't get paid for judging. You get paid. Uh, uh, they, they pay yeah, your, your uh, travel and, and a hotel and things like that. I was uh, with Sealy at my niece's wedding on fr Thursday evening, oh, Thursday in night. In London? No, in, uh, in uh, Caesarea. 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 Uh, at 12 o'clock, I left the place. I drove to the airport. I arrived there, I stopped in, uh, somewhere, and I arrived there at tw two o'clock for a flight that was supposed to, be, to, to take off at six o'clock. I stood in line for four damn hours, okay? All, just stood for, for four hours, reached the, the gate, and the plane was late. So we and so I I flew I ah I wanted to take my trolley up. I had a big fight with the with the uh, crew. They didn't want me to take my trolley. Uh, in the end, we managed somehow. And after all of this, I arrived at the dog show. Okay, come on. How many people do you, do you know who do such things? We we we're, we're all nuts, you know. That, that but but it's in our blood. And and people are, are doing all sorts of crazy things. But do, they see the, that, do, that, do you see your dogs are your children? Um, in some in some way, yes. Right. In some I way, yes. I, I always say that when people ask me how many dogs I have, I always say I have the number of dogs that can fit in my bed. Wow. <laughs> That's the criteria. So then I will ask you if you see them as your wife, like uh, you know, like uh, a hormone of. But I ask about no. some people no. believe that they are, it's they treat them like he's my child. Do you have children? They answer me, no, I have a dog. But it, this is mainly in America, right? In America, many Americans. Do you have a child? Treat no, the no, dogs no. like babies. Yeah. Okay. I think in New York they're willing to expend more money on dogs than on kids, and the stores for dogs are more than any other thing and it's crazy this is crazy what well, what people are, are spending sometimes crazy and and what nowadays the the craze is what we call grooming which means right. taking a dog to to a, a hairdresser and they they okay let let's say a poodle that's something completely different okay they, when when you when you uh, groom a poodle for show it will take an entire day. Yeah, this no, is what no. my friend is doing, you know, Lee Pecker, right? But but even for small dogs with regular coat, they have invented all sorts of uh, um, things that you, you cosmetics, you know, uh, shampoos and and conditioners and this type of, of brush and that type of, of brush, crazy. Believe me, when I started with, with pure bred dogs, I had dogs with with a lot of coat called old old English sheep dogs. They look like sheep between you and me. And the amount of, of time that I would spend on grooming them, and I never took them to someone else, I groomed them myself. Um, I would groom them for, for an entire day wow. before we went to a show. But I didn't use all these cosmetics. We, The people that, that, I, that I learned from, they said to me, use, uh, um, the the gel for for the for the uh, dishes this for the show okay don't you don't need all those things and now 
I have four dogs, which I usually finish grooming all of them in one hour. And that's oh. the, the difference. That's why I stopped. I had to stop. Uh, wonderful dog, excellent temperament, but my back said no more. Right. But you um, we know that there is another side of the dog world, which is um, a lot of stealing and smuggling and making money. Um, and I know a few organizations that are trying to stop it. Um, what do you know about that and how, how uh, the, the dog lovers or the authorities fight it? Well, it's a really big issue because in some breeds are sold for enormous prices, really. I'll give you an example, Pomeranians. Yeah. A couple of yeah. years ago, they were crazy. People would pay $5,000 for a dog and they didn't even care. And that's, uh, I'm getting to the point. They didn't even care it, where it came from. As long as it looked like a Pomeranian, right. they, they would pay for it. And that's wh where this thing comes from. Because people used, and I think they still do, to smuggle dogs. And Israel is not open. You, you have to come by plane. They would put these tiny little dogs and very small ones, I mean, young ones, like one month old or even less, in boxes. And they would smuggle them. Half of them would die. They didn't care. Now, what's going on nowadays, it, much more uh, enforcement in, in, in the airport. You have to, to get all sorts of licenses from here to eternity. And I don't think it's stopping that. I think it's making life harder for people like myself, who, for instance, if I want to uh, breed more healthy dogs, I need to bring other dogs not to, to, to breed inside the family, okay? And so that's making life very difficult. If I want to, to bring a dog, I, it's crazy, just, just, just paying for that. But on the other hand, uh, you, you get to the airport, there's a, a vet who's supposed to, to check the dogs, but, and, and they, but, but the, the people who are smuggling them, they know how to, how to get out What about dog fights, the uh, gambling? As far as I know, uh, it, it's more uh, in the Arab sector, uh, but I, it's quite rare nowadays because this has been stopped. Uh, hunting, people are not allowed to hunt in Israel. Um, and when the Bedouins, for instance, they, for them, it's very important that their dogs can hunt. That's why, again, if I go back, and they have these hunts but then they're, they're not allowed to have them. Uh, and if the, the Nature Reserve Authority catches these uh, dogs, they kill them, which is nasty, yeah. crazy. Yeah. I don't know, this conversation made me a bit upset, I'm sorry, um, because I love dogs, I just cannot have them now because I go back and forth from New York to Tel Aviv and it's too much for me to carry them and I will not put them in the, uh, you know, right. Yeah, but, but it, it's either I can I, I perceive those competition like you know the Victoria's Secret shows, you know Victoria's mm -hmm. Secret. They all have yeah, to I'm be. Sure. They all have to be perfect. If they are not perfect, they don't even enter the mm -hmm. door to Victoria's Secrets. And there is great inequality between no. them and me. That's that's not that's not true. I'm sorry if that's what the impression that you got. One thing, first of all. Next time you're in Israel, let me know. I'll invite I'm you to now. see it. Oh, there is shows okay. in Israel? I didn't know. There's a, there's I'm here a show, until the end of August. There's a show, there's a couple of shows in, in uh, um, this weekend in uh, near Tel Aviv. Oh, uh, okay. uh, so if you want just to have a look. Um, and it's, it's definitely not like that because the people who, who show their dogs, they care about them, first of all. Now, there are different dogs in the same breed. There's the, the difference. Now, judges are not robots. Each has their own way of looking at things. So today, 
if you are judge, I'm, if I'm judging, I will go for one dog. And tomorrow, another jo judge with the same dog will take another one. So there is, now, if, if you have a, a problem with your dog, I, let's say it's limping or something like that, okay. And we also have things like if you, the dogs many in many breeds, you need to have a good bite, the the the, the they because that's what what they need. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so and sometimes we what we call disqualify a dog because it has some very bad faults and it shouldn't be used for breeding. That's the idea. Right. Now, but when we're judging, we give a report, a critique about each of the dogs. So the people who, who, who come, they know what, what we think about it, not just one, two, three, and that's it. Yes. And that's important because again, it gives them feedback on what the judge thinks about their dog. Yeah. And if you come to several shows, you will get enough feedback to understand yeah. what you have in your hands. Yeah. Penny, what is the so, correlation between the owner's personality and the dog? Is the dog changes by being with the same owner? Uh, and what is a, a symbiosis kind of relationship? What is coming and going between each other? There is a very interesting book based on a, a, a research on a study made uh, in Canada in one of the universities by a psychology professor. Uh, it's called why we love the dogs we do and it does it, it deals exactly with this question i mean we all say the dog looks like its owner you know it doesn't always look like its owner it, i mean look really my dogs don't look like me yeah but how they, can they be you're not a violent man i guess can they be violent they can be become violent your dogs my dogs can they only, be because you are not only only if there's some problem but let, let, let me just just explain for let me give you just a few more details the 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 idea there is that the dogs don't just copy us or they're not just an image of us but they sometimes complement not complement complement okay. they they uh, add to the picture like, let me let me give you an example. I, I knew somebody, big fat woman, who used to come to the park jogging. So she had this very elegant dog, a greyhound, who would run around uh, next to her. How did they get together? <laughs> very easy. She, the dog, was what she wished to look like. Okay, <laughs> now. For I, I, my dogs, they're very, very friendly. If if we, we go walk for a walk, they see somebody on the other side of the street, they'll they'll try to run there and get get some attention, which is exactly me because I like people and I like I, I'm I'm very friendly. Okay. Um I had a, a I knew a social worker who had this really violent dog. Uh who, who would actually, uh, she, uh, was aggressive, and several times the dog bit people. Why did she have it? Because again, it complemented what she never was. So that's one thing. Now, we our type of, of our um, um, uh, personality, definitely we have dogs with the personality that can suit us. And there, as I said, there's a book, a book about it. So if people are interested, um, they should try and, and, and look it up. Um, but for but, example, you know, I heard that, you know, like let's say Rottweiler, we, we think they are violent, right? But I was told in America, by the way, that a Rottweiler not. is not really, it's only if their owner breed them, and, I mean, you know, encourage or whatever. What you're them. saying now is so true I wish all the authorities would get that in their head, okay? Because the people, the, the ones responsible for what the dogs are doing are the owners. Sure. Now, if we start from the beginning, from an early age, you have to socialize your dogs. 
you have to take them out, show them the world. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> you're talking about a positive society. Now in Jerusalem, there are many Arabs who take the dog and they teach them to attack. So well, like, but again, take a dog. you have people that take dogs that they think they can use them in order to do... There are a lot of stuff. Jewish Israelis so, also learn, yes, yes, teach yes. them how to attack. So but, it's, it's, but that's not the dog's problem. It's the people's problem. That, and it's our problem as a society. And, and, our, and we don't do enough for that. You know, they're always telling us, oh, stop breeding your dogs because there are too many dogs in homes, okay? And uh, they're, they're abandoned and whatever. Have a look in the homes and have and tell me if you see one dog with a pedigree there. You don't, because when I sell or give a dog, I make sure that it goes to a good family. I sign a contract with them oh. that if there's any problem, the the dog will come back to me, and if they need anything, they will. They, I'm there for them. They will not put yeah. the dog in. In, in the, the whole we world. Have, this yep. is like unbelievable right. whole world. You we need to dog. end. You both have dogs. I don't have dogs. My last dog, her name was Bella. <laughs> and yeah, and she was deserted. And she died when she was 17. And I sat by her when the doctor put her to sleep. And I cursed her. But that oh. was like 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 16. And now I don't have a dog. But I keep oh. looking at them whenever we sit in the park, and then I guess which one I want. <laughs> but anyway, you both. Yossi, we need to go. You need to go. Just wait. Give one wait. word. One, one word. word. One moment. You I want to show you my little puppy. Okay. What's your favorite breed? Oh, you let them in now. Wait, 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 oh, wait, wait. come on. Hi, Booby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't want it. So, so get her up. Wow. 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 She's beautiful. Wow. It's wow. Me. She. She loves people. Look at what, look what she's doing to me now. So you don't have to clean your uh, behind the, the, the ears. Okay. What's no, stopping no. in life? Look, look everywhere. Wow, wow, wow. So friendly. Yes, and thank you. Thank you. Just what's her name? What's her name? Eh? Sushi. 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 I will call my dog steak. <laughs> pulke. Well, pulke, look. pulke. Okay, Sushi. Okay, Yossi Bendodi. Bye -bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so see. much. It was Thank lovely. Thank you, everybody. Learn a lot about week. you.